Welcome back, everybody. Episode 33 of the Merch Podcast. Uh, another special guest for you today. Belta. 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 He's even shaved. <laughs> shaved himself, isn't everything? Freshly Aye. shaved. <laughs> yes, freshly shaved. <laughs> I'm just back from Turkey, actually. I had a, a, a hair transplant. Did you actually? No. No. <laughs> 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 Fuck, he's got us already my 30 seconds in uh, <laughs> you mate Moon. <laughs> but aye, so just before we, we introduce uh, our guest just a wee bit of housekeeping again so this uh, episode of the, spot, the podcast is sponsored by Sphere, Pod, uh, Sphere McDonald Hodge Media um, so again big thanks to Steve for helping us out with our media um, some trailers we've got a, an interview with Kenny and I called Gavin and Kenny on the couch coming soon as well um, so again big thanks to Steve <laughs> so Today's guest, if you've not already figured it out, is um, Scottish comedian and actor Darren Connell. So, Darren, pleasure, mate. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very much. I do realise a lot of people will be thinking, is he fucking dying? If they've only seen, <laughs> like, see if they've watched Scott Squad and then see me right now, they're like, is this an appeal for help? Like, <laughs> you stick him on me a mask and all that one. Like, ah, Two pound like, a month, you can help Mr. Coral. Hi, I need a lung transplant. Can anybody help me? <laughs> <laughs> any, any spare lungs going about? <laughs> when you phone the Guinness for? Are you drinking pints of Guinness? Eh? I'm oh, old. my. We had, oh, uh, Dar, we had um, a guy called the Guinness Guru, Dara, a boy from Dublin on the other day. Uh, he basically, his job is just to, well, not his job, but his, his hobby and he's trying to make it his job is he basically travels around Ireland reviewing pints of Guinness in every pub. Um, so he, he came on and gave us a wee master class on how to pour a can, which you better just do that into the into the glass Brilliant. technical stuff so, highly technical so stuff that was the first Guinness I had in I don't know how long so I quite enjoyed it so I thought eh, be special occasion I'll have another couple so, aye, I bought, nice. so, I, so I bought eight of them <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> so I like, like a Guinness um, that, Dan do you like a Guinness I used to I used to drink Guinness all the time aye, but when I was younger I used to drink it all the time man it made me struggle with my weight and it gives you a different type of drunk as well you get absolutely steaming at it <laughs> the hangovers are different I know but uh, I, uh, what, I used to what, like a Guinness the toilet I mean the toilet the next day is a bit rough isn't it? Guinness job oh. 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 it's like back in the day they're like half a pint of Guinness is good for you but we're all having fucking 20 pints of Guinness I captain for 30 Guinness I know it's really good high in Ireland it's good, it good for you <laughs> 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 oh, I've got to say, mate, see, see everybody you've been telling uh, since you came on. Like, my missus, what's she like, Kenny? I said, do I, do I come on before we go on and say hi? She's like, no, no. Cause she, she's, she, you're her favourite character, obviously, in Scott Squad. Um, I don't mind that, oh, Kenny. Funny enough, so, uh, uh, so I, it was a bit, it's funny everybody we've been telling has been excited for this one. So, Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. And how's it been going? That's episode 33, isn't it? 33, uh, aye. It's, we only started, uh, started in May. Um, this year so we'd spoke about it obviously and then lockdown happened and it was like kind of a prime opportunity wasn't it to, to kind of start aye, and aye just getting it's been, it's been going job. well you, so. did, you did your own podcast as well didn't you I did um, but I've kind of stopped and started it um, at the start of lockdown I'd about 17 or something mm -hmm. like anything else in my life I'd done it for 17 days in a row and then I just chucked it <laughs> <laughs> but it went. It was going well. I got a good couple of guests on it, and but I don't know why I stopped it. I, just, I was just like, oh, I don't, I don't want to be known as the podcast guy. I'd rather be known as a comedian. But aye, aye. Um, there's no shame in having a podcast. Everybody has a podcast. I don't even know. I'm just a lazy bastard. I'm a lazy bastard. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Felt bad seeing I don't want to be known as a guy that does a podcast. Fuck, fuck him. Doing a, doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good fun, but um, I'll probably bring it back. Aye. Well, you had, as you say, some of the guests you had on, like, I'd watched, I've actually watched the episode with Gradle. I've watched it twice now. Uh, oh, good. It, I mean, the one I was, it was brilliant. He's a, he's a cracking laugh, eh? Ah, he's a good lad. What you see is what you get, by the way. Is, uh, that's not a character. <laughs> <laughs> luckily, luckily, what we see is the what we get for you if you're talking about Bobby on Scott Squad, anyway. <laughs> that, that, that'd have been an interesting podcast, wouldn't it? Hi, uh, any jelly babies? <laughs> 
<laughs> you use much of Power Rangers. <laughs> I love the Power Rangers. One. <laughs> there you go, you got Hi. One. Uh, but so, how first of all, how's lockdown been for you? I know it's obviously been difficult with like comedy and all the shows, like they shows exactly and acting as well. Like, um, that was all kind of halted. So, what's it been yeah. like? <laughs> Well, like everybody else, uh, at the start for the first maybe two weeks when everything was starting to get cancelled and stuff, it was I struggled uh, because Scott Squad get cancelled on set as we were filming, and then Panto stopped and all that kind of stuff. So there was a lot of financial kind of uh, worries, and uh, being a comedian, it's like kind of paycheck to paycheck. So it was like instant what am I going to do with my life? But I see myself thinking, I've got two paths here. I can go down the depressed road, which I always go down, or I can just embrace it. It's probably been the best thing that's happened to me now. Like, I don't drink or anything anyway. So I've not drank for a couple of years. So I just hit a fitness kick, took it a day at a time, tried to remain positive and just accepted what was happening because no matter what happens, we're fucked. So I might as well <laughs> be positive about it instead of being depressed about it's it. It's a good way to look about it, eh? 100%. Because you, so, you've like a shitload of weight, though, eh? Yeah, I've lost a couple of stone, mate. I'm not too sure how much I've lost in total, but I think at my heaviest, I was about 20 stone, so I don't know what I am now. stone, eh? Aye, uh, man. You tall? Aye. You really tall? I think I'm just under six. I think I'm five eleven. I'm sure I'm a. Oh man, that must have oh, yeah. contributed to the fact that you say you used to go down the whole kind of depressed route. That obviously wouldn't have helped there. So, oh, therefore, <laughs> you did. I mean, it's so cliched, but see the yar what you eat and yar what you drink and stuff. It's so uh, true, man. See if you eat shite you're going to feel like shite it took me 30 years to realise it <laughs> but it started off I'm 32 I, man I've not realised it <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate honestly it just hits you like see one day I was I was going into my mum's street and I take a shortcut and I climb out a fence to get to her house quicker and um, when I climbed out the fence I walked up the hill and I thought my heart was going to fucking explode and <laughs> it was just that moment that made me think I better do I better sort this out aye uh, but I before you, then, I was just not giving a fuck. I remember you saying on uh, your podcast with Grado, and you were, you were talking about how when you used to go for the bus, get off the bus or something, and go into the kebab shop, and you could eat like a kebab for the bus stop back to your house or something. <laughs> Aye. And then get back to my house and be like, what's for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I've no eating four days. You grew up in Springburn, is that right? Yes, mate, yeah. Springburn, Springburn, born and raised. Um, so we we stone throw away for me as well. Are you? Where are you? I was in Milton. I grew up in Milton. All oh, right, good man. Right, what so, school did you go to? Yeah, we all Saints. All Saints. Aye. Uh, so <laughs> no, I went to my primary was Saint Matthews, oh, and yeah. then my high school was Tumble. Tumble on the bricks. How did you do at high schools? How did you do well at high school? Oh, I was terrible, mate. Can I swear? Yeah. Can oh, I swear? Of course you can. Maybe you are. Terrible, say it, say it fucking. I was shite. <laughs> <laughs> I was foundy. I was basically foundy in everything apart from music and uh, English. I was already at English, but I never had any interest in school at sure. all. I wasn't a bad pupil, but I just couldn't adjust to it at all. Uh, yeah. What Julie. about you? <coughs> shite. Shite, aye. Shite, aye. <laughs> Because <laughs> a common theme here with people who are doing some things like this, so they're all fucking terrible in school, eh? <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, but I just found that school was just too. You need to be here at this time, yes, at that time, and just I. Uh, it wasn't for me. Change. We spoke about this uh, type of two podcasts ago, I think, Kenny. We were saying what the way you spoke to and stuff like that is like maybe you were trying to grow up a bit too quick, but I just couldn't. I couldn't take to somebody saying, you know, you boy, come here, you know, fuck off. Like, not interested, um, but surely growing up in growing up in Springburn, that must have gave you some material for for later life in comedy. Yeah, must have. Oh, <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> I did, I did a joke. Uh, Springburn, Springburn's a type of place when you walk down the street and if you see shite on the pavement, you go, "That's not a dog." 
but it is what it is. Uh, I'm not actually. Pro- I'm like on the line of spring burning bushy. So right. when I'm talking to a bird, I say I'm for bushy Briggs. Yeah. <laughs> 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 see, see, see when people used to ask me, like, Where, "Where's Milton? I've never heard of Milton." I would always say, "Oh, it's in, do you know Bishop Briggs? It's just just to the side of Bishop Briggs." I wouldn't say it's in between Poso and Springburn. <laughs> aye. <laughs> so aye. I'm basically on the line of the Welcome to Eastern Bartonshire. I'm like oh, right. on that line. There you go. Because um, I'd seen that uh, one of the articles that was saying that you if you spring but you then moved to Bishop Brick and I thought, oh, moving up in the world with that. I'm moving from spring to, to my house, fucking <laughs> back in with my mom. But you used to work in Asda as well, is that right? Yeah, that I worked up in Asda, Rob Royston, for about seven years. I worked in Safeway in Bishop Briggs as well. Oh, that was my first Safeway? job. Safeway, man. Wow. Is when I left school, £3.45, I know. That with the wage was high. Mm-hmm. It's a good I remember getting that, I know. I got £3.64 £3. for working in JD when I was 16. <sighs> Horrendous, isn't it? That is grim. That's madness. That is pretty sad to look back. Well, I don't know what £3 goes back in the day, but... Must have been no, it was a bump. It was an absolute <laughs> bump. Aye. Honestly, it was like six days a week and it's like £95 a week or something. Just disgraceful. That's crazy, isn't it? Aye. Pure Aye. slavery. <laughs> mm-hmm. An apprentice fucking uh, JD worker, that was. An apprentice uh, JD worker? Because right, apprentice, like when you start an apprentice, an apprentice you, get, you get paid. No, no, for, no for that, man. No for no apprentice to be what, a sales assistant. No, oh, a joiner or something. Ah, right. <laughs> I thought you were talking about trying to say that JD are out. Come on, be an apprentice with JD and... No, no, not at, no, not at all, mate. Not at all. That'd be shite. Uh, but I, so I read, I think it was a BBC article. <clears throat> I read that and they were saying like how obviously when you worked in, you worked in Asda, but you were still trying to kind of, that was you starting to try, try your kind of hand at comedy. And you got to the, was it the finals of Scottish Comedian of the Year or something like that? And you thought you had to pull a sickie to you. <laughs> this, um... <laughs> The Scottish comedy, uh, what is it called again? The Scottish comedian of the year was my fiftieth gig, and I got to the uh-huh. final on my fiftieth gig, and Asda when they gave me it off, and I was just like, "Are you actually being serious? You actually think I'm going to come in and do my shift?" <laughs> and they were like, "Well, you need to do your shift." Yeah, no bother. So I done a gig at the O2. I think there was maybe seven hundred people there. Wow, wow. it was. Uh, crazy it was an amazing gig but I did uh, I started off in Charlie Rossi's comedy course at the Metropolitan College right. and it was only 10 weeks and when I started I was on my 10th gig and within the 10 weeks I got up to 50 so it's mad how things work out but obviously I still worked in Asda for years and years and then I just mm-hmm. finally thought Fuck this man. <laughs> Just I need to pursue it. it. Yeah. Yeah. How did you end up pursuing it? Like, were you funny at school and I'm just funny? I, w- I wouldn't say I was, I wasn't funny. I don't know. Like, uh, I was a bit of a loner, but I was like mad for always loved films, loved comedy. It wasn't until like a couple of teachers told me I was a class clown, but they say they, they liked me. I wasn't a dick. You were a likeable class clown then? Aye. Aye, aye. Uh, But I wasn't like uh, half my nut or anything. I just kind of kept myself to myself. Is that you cracking under the can of Guinness? Can you give me any trouble for pulling it on camera last week? So I'm going to start. I've seen that with the Guinness story. I was pulling it, watching them on the camera, saying, Can you see me, dearest? Look how good I'm (laughs) pulling this. We had the fucking Guinness guru on. I was trying to get him to approve, right? Have you ever heard the uh, what's the drink? Is that an Irish car bomb? No, no, what is that? <laughs> I think it's Bailey's Guinness, and there's a shot of something in it, and milk maybe. See if you don't drink it within 15 seconds, it curdles. It oh. gets you absolutely out of your bed, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you need, what do you need milk in it for? I don't know. Go I think that's one of the reasons why I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> probably so you can drink it quicker, because you, know I mean? you know it's going to curdle, so you just need to drink uh, it. Get you back there. The, the Guinness guru has heard as a different he, he started kind of mixing with Guinness and he done that like a blue wicked a like half blue wicked and then half Guinness so I tried that the other night when he was on it was beautiful man it was really nice 
Aye, nice. some, of the ones, some of the ones he's done though are like fucking horrible, eh? Horrible. Aye, aye. aye how, how do you, right, anyway, anyway hey, Dan, how do you end up into films? Eh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, uh, I'd say my granddad. My granddad got me into films. Really? Like, when I was younger, he was mad for, you know, have you heard of the Marx Brothers and Laurel and Hardy and stuff? Laurel and Hardy, Hardy yeah. I've heard of Hardy, yeah. Well, uh, he used to, like, collect old film posters and stuff. And when I used to go into his room, he had, like, Groucho Marx posters and all that kind of stuff, Charlie Chaplin, and he huh. got me into that. It was like TCM, I think, on the, the when it was I the TV know. channels. Uh-huh. I uh-huh. so I just always had this fascination with it, a love for it, and then when I grew up, I started watching my own thing and my own comedy. But I think my I I used to just watch Laurel and Hardy, and then when I was old enough to watch the TV by myself. Um, I started watching Shooting Stars with Vicky Brilliant. Bob. Our and that just showman. changed my life. That just Aye. was unbelievable. I felt like I get hooked into a drip of drugs and I was like, <laughs> I need I need more of this. Do you remember but the that's tune my... for it? Do you remember the wee tune for Shooting Stars? Aye, aye. Aye, aye. 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 Do you remember? Do you want me to sing it? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to see if you can sing it, man. Just get stuck right in. Yeah, do, did you watch Shooting Stars? No, I, I definitely know the name, mate, but I don't think I've seen uh, it. It used now. to be. Oh, uh, mate. The big the dove from above and all that mm. sort of stuff, mate. Oh, it was so funny, man. Aye. Do you have you seen. Sorry, sorry. Just, just, anyway, have yeah. you seen Taskmaster? Have you heard of that? I have, actually, but what is it again? It's. It's the big tall guy for uh, the in between us. He's the host, and he's got an R guy beside him, and five kind of like comedians going it, and they get gain absurd tasks today for ten episodes. Mm-hmm. Bob Mortimer was on it, and he's just so funny, man. It's just natural how funny it is it's no like you see what you see what you get really. William, if you can't be yeah. doing a task, he was just like, ah, I'm not doing this. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it. And you just walk yeah. out, and they cut back to the show and like, why did you not do it, Bob? Man? Well, I don't know how to do it, so what's, what's the point in wasting your time? Like, <laughs> I'll get another one, don't worry. <laughs> he's got funny bones, isn't he? Like a lot nah. of comedians try too hard. He's just nah, he's really. just naturally funny, man. I seen them live actually, Vic and Bob at the Clyde Auditorium a couple of years ago, maybe about four, four and a half years ago. Bob had a health scare and it got cancelled and then they get brought yeah. back and it was amazing man I get quite emotional watching them actually even though it was so nostalgia. stupid just uh, nostalgia and just like thinking because all my comedy heroes are the Marx Brothers and Charlie Chaplin that's the 30s and 40s uh, I'd yeah. only class Vic and Bob as my modern day modern day oh really kind of comedy heroes it's I never knew they done I know obviously if you seen them on Taskmaster that there was like oh, I didn't know he was a comedian I thought they were just Presenters of Shooting Stars and a couple of shows. I didn't know they were mm. actual proper stand-up comedians. I don't think they do stand-up comedy. No. So they, they just do live. Like when they... It was good, but it was like getting on a bit. Do you know what I mean? They were, they're so physical at their comedy. You could tell Bob was like, when they were kneeling down or stuff, or they were going on the flare, they were kind of struggling to stand up and all that. But <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, Aye. Yeah. My, kind of, my hero is my hero. She, like, obviously being in, in comedy and stuff like that, do you feel yourself always kind of leaning towards like, that, that comedy sort of genre of films as well? Or are you quite open to any sort of genre? I love all films. I was speaking about the cine world getting shut down this week. Um, I was gaining it. It was devastating because... When are they going to turn that into? I don't know because that was the tallest cinema in Europe when it was built aye. so I'd imagine that it's going to open back up it's just shut down for the time being but how long is the time being it could be two years or whatever aye because they're one of the top well, I don't know how many other ones in America I know they're in America as well so but they're one of the, the biggest companies about so aye. Fuck it, it's bad news for cinemas eh Oh, it's mental, man. Everybody, uh, everybody in that sector, and it? it's just shit. It's, uh, it's, it's just that's where you used to go when you're a wee guy and on a Friday. Go, 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 go to cinema. 
Like you thought you had uh, a pure night out. <laughs> <laughs> remember, do you ever remember a film called The Others with Nicole Kidman? The Others? No. no. It's a pure, sh- it was shite, right? <laughs> and for some reason I went to see it seven times during the summer holidays. <laughs> <laughs> it was pure shite just to get it <laughs> just to because I just like his cinema did you go I, to, uh, sorry there you go no you go you go. I was just going to say did you go to the cinema once the uh, lockdown kind of eased that kind of transition period is now getting back into a kind of half a loving but did you go uh, I did I went to see Bill and Ted uh, the new Bill and Ted it wasn't good no, at all and then I went to see another one with Russell Russell Crow, it was called Unhinged. Right. Now, I don't think it was supposed to be funny, right? But he's about <laughs> 30 stone in it, right? And it's about a guy who has a mental breakdown and he just goes about curling cunts. And you're like, the last time I seen him was in Gladiator and he was built like a brick shit house. And now it's just like, what's happened? But it was, I don't know, I found it funny. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was good. I was like to have um, ages, man. See Russell Crowe, I think, I'm sure it was him, he was in The Other Guys, we him in, uh, what do you call it? No, no, The Other Guys, sorry. Oh, uh, oh, fuck, what's it called? Ryan Gosling, it's the one with Ryan Gosling. And him, and it's like set in the 70s, did you see that one? And two of them, he's, uh, he's like a crook. Have you seen it? No. Oh, I can't remember that one. Yeah, I can't remember I probably, have, I probably have seen it. Uh, but that was the first time I'd seen Russell Crowe in a film, for, it felt like fucking years. Because I felt he just disappeared off the face of the earth, and then... All of a sudden, he's getting back now. Fairy store, obviously. You should watch. I'm no, I'm no fat shaming him. He's an absolute legend, but uh, I'd, I'd watch it. He's, he's fell for the dizzy and heights of being gladiator. To <laughs> not, not gladiator. He's maybe eight gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's metal, yeah. But I, see, see, just getting back to your your comedy. So, what was this? So you obviously mentioned that you were you'd been to that kind of was it Chrissy Ross. Is that what you said? Uh, Charlie you? Ross. Charlie Ross. Chrissy oh. Ross is a comedian, though, isn't he? Aye, aye, I'm aye, not aye. Uh, a Chrissy. So, a lot of comedians do that course, don't they? Sorry, Gav. I just tapped you on a bell. There's two. Uh, Charlie Ross doesn't do his course anymore. Uh, but the most popular one, I would say, is Viv G. And I never did Viv G's course. <laughs> It's oh, beneficial. Sure. They don't make you funny. I mean, you're either aye, funny or you're not funny. Aye, but aye. They, they teach you about the industry and they teach you like what an open spot is, what a main support is, kind of green room respect, all that kind of stuff. But they won't teach you how to be funny. You're either a diamond in the rough or you're just not funny. That's that. Yeah, you're just rough. <laughs> aye, that's it. That. So, see when you said that you'd, you'd already done 10 gigs, when you went there, what, what was your? Can you remember how how you came about your first gig? Would you just phone people and say, like, "Listen, can I <laughs> come in?" I was it open mic or what is it? My very first gig was at the Stand Comedy Club in Glasgow, and uh, it was a Tuesday night at Red Raw. Oof. And uh, yeah, oh, I remember that. that I, I was first gig, but I remember that. See if you remember my first gig. I wouldn't be on this podcast right now. <laughs> I died on my arse. It was horrific. <laughs> Still haunts yeah. my dreams. I tell you how long ago it was. Uh, Celtic were playing Benfica, and Kenny Miller scored two goals. Fuck That's sake. how long ago it was. Oh wow, man! <laughs> there you go. Talk us through it. Talk us through it, man. I know it's worth bringing up your pure, your horror, like bit. I can't really remember much because I started because I was so nervous. Um, I started drinking stupidly at four pm, and oh. the doors. The doors of the stand opened at half seven. So by the time I got to the stand, I was paralytic steaming. Uh, I've told this story a few times, but for some reason I went into a, a charity shop and I bought a three-piece suit thinking that it would be funny. And I bought a top, a top hat for Tam Shepherds. Oh, I fucking nice. I walked into the stand with a suit on wearing a top hat. Out my bin. <laughs> <laughs> we still laughing about it now. I know, man. Oh, Gar- Gar- Gary Little was a compere that night, and he, until recently, he always just a member of your first gig. I was like, oh no. <laughs> He's Gary Little was a big guy, the big bald guy, isn't he? Aye. Aye. Like, aye. He's aye. a good lad. I remember his. What, what year that Celtic game was? Do you remember it? 2006, maybe. Oof. 
A long time ago, wasn't it? 2017, 17th October. Mate, yeah, that was it, aye. There you go, man. Do you remember any, any of your material for that night at all, no? Because you're all that pissed. No, I was... See, because I used to study television production and sound recording. Right. I wanted to do drama, but I was too nervous. So I went and did TV. And then when I went and did TV, I realised it wasn't yeah. for me. Started being a class clown, and a boy in the class was like, you should do stand-up. I had no idea what stand-up comedy was. Never heard of the stand in my life. But when he told me, all you need to do is write five minutes, so I kind of had an idea. Or a, it was just like Hunter's a brain farts on a bit of paper. <laughs> all your cliched shit, like... You know, that way you're like, oh, I come for Paisley is like a punchline uh-huh. or uh-huh. Iron Brew or fucking Greg's. It was <laughs> it was all that shit. It was just anybody get Facebook, blah, blah, blah. But it, it wasn't even as good as that. But I think <laughs> I, I, started, I started getting laughs because I was drunk and then people were like, oh, he's just steaming. So it, it wasn't as, as, for a first gig, I don't think it was as bad as what, it normally is, yeah, but it yeah. was still, it was still fucking awful. I never did it again until I was 22. That's how yeah. much it shocked me, man. It haunted my dreams. And then I seen, I was in college, I was studying to be a barber. Right. And I was, I was dogging class. I was just walking about the college <laughs> and I seen a poster. I just done that. Can I go to the toilet? And then I just walked about the, the entire <laughs> college, and I seen a poster in the wall, and it said Charlie Ross's comedy course. And then that's when I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to that. Get into that. So what was your, what was your next? So what kind of change then? For obviously, you said they, they don't teach you how to be funny. That's just something that you've got. But so, what's the difference between obviously? Being paralytic is probably a big factor in it, but what can I change for your first gig or first 10 gigs to then push you on to the next 40? Well, I did have a self-awareness, I think, and I did think, I think I am funny, but I just, I've never had any experience of being on a stage in my life, so it will be nerves, I'm just no used to it. Mm-hmm. So I'll go and give myself another chance, and if, I'm, if I do die in Mars, then I will stop. And I went and did that again. I was supposed to do five minutes and I did maybe three minutes. But I remember getting two laughs that were like, oh, I, like, I've never had this before. And then it made me realise I better respect this industry. I'll go down to the stand and all the other comedy clubs and just constantly watch mm-hmm. stand-up comedy. And it just gave us a hunger to, to pursue it. And then through his course and meeting other comedians, it kind of took away my nerves. But that was a problem for me. Uh, nerves. Nerves. Nerves, aye. Big time. I can imagine. 100%. I could yeah. never, ever, ever imagine doing it, eh? I just think it's... Mate, if, if I was... No acting, because it's... Cause it's you, need to, you, you need to know you're the person writing it, presenting it, and you need to present it in the right manner. Bring it on the Crumble man, before right to my ass. <laughs> Good night, man. <laughs> Aye, definitely. How, how many, see if you had to kind of estimate, how many gigs you have done altogether? I don't know. I always remember meeting a comedian in the back of the stand, and he was like, Many gigs have you done? And I said, Four. <laughs> and then I done that to him many gigs have you done and he's like thousands and I was like what how do you do that <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, honestly I don't know I mean it, it must it must be a thousand uh, like maybe more because that's been like I'm 33 now so I honestly I don't know man it must be close to a thousand Aye, because you've done the Fringe as well, haven't you? I've done a full Fringe run. I've done the Classical Comedy Festival. I had that all planned for sure. next year. I was going to do a wee Scottish tour. I, had a, I think I had a 17-date Scottish tour planned. And uh, I was going to do the Fringe again. I was looking at the Leicester Comedy Festival. But, well, that's fucked now. Aye. Aye, everything's fucked. What do you think of it? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? That can be There's the sound clip great. for this podcast. <laughs> Everything's, Everything's fucked. Yeah. Everything's <laughs> fucked. 
<laughs> did, you, did you ever think about doing the, the Zoom? You know, people doing gigs through Zoom and all that sort of stuff. Or did you think I might do that? Or? No, I couldn't do Zoom. I did one gig at the stand. Uh, they were doing a live Facebook stream, and there was no, uh, there was no audience. Uh-huh. So I never done a gig in a hundred and ten days. I turn up at the stand. The guy sets up the tripod, and he says, "See that red light in the tripod? Pretend that that's your audience." And I was first on, and I went up and I did f- five minutes to an empty room for the first time in 110 days. Mm-hmm. And I remember walking off and being drenched in sweat, thinking, God, that was awful. I watched it back, and it was all right, but it just wasn't a stand-up comedy. Like, mm-hmm. see, then it was a crowd. It's just you not the same. You didn't you? Uh, you know, right. even... I do a lot of improv. I see daft echoes. I see daft anything in the crowd. And see, just doing it to nothing. It was just weird. Um, Aye, because one of one of your previous guests we had, we had Des Clark on. Uh, I think it was episode, uh, episode ten or something. And he he was doing some of the Zoom gigs, mm-hmm. and he was he was being polite about it. But I, you, you can tell it just wasn't he, wasn't he right, was it? Do you know what I mean? Nah. A Zoom gig, for as much as there is a wee tiny delay, you can get a, a bit of back and forth with people, but nothing will ever. You know, you can't even beat a live crowd if you're a comedian. That would be my biggest fear, but. Yeah, I, uh, it made me kind of I dipped my toe in to see what it was like and it made me realise I'll just wait until crowds come back uh, I, I'm missing it and stuff but I'm not going to it'd be like a snooker player using a twig instead of a cue <laughs> aye, aye. what's the point in that <laughs> <laughs> so have you been writing more material in that for us or is it kind of you need life experience to get stuff like that done or no, nah, I've not really been. I wrote a short horror film, a ten-minute horror film, and uh, I remember see the first week when I found out that I lost everything. Like literally lost everything, thousands of pounds of work. Scott Squad get cancelled, and my brother done it. So have you wrote any jokes? I lost. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> that was perfect, <laughs> Simon. That was <laughs> perfect one. <laughs> my brother was like, yeah, "So have you wrote any jokes?" I was like, eh, "I want to fucking kill myself, mate." Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've not really I've wrote a couple of things but maybe no as uh, as much as what I used to but uh, it's, a, it's a muscle as soon as I get back into it I'll, I'll pick it up do you know, do you know what I love it? Uh, <laughs> Kenny will tell you see all your videos that you put on Twitter and stuff like that uh, oh, I, man. See, see the one do you know how I found it so funny because right? we, we work in a gym right and uh, <laughs> when you put up the one about uh, the guys I speak to in Springburn Sauna, <laughs> I was fucking howling because that is the people you meet in a sauna. Aye. Yeah. That's real life experience for me, I know, by the way. Was that's it? just like a, a, mundle, a bundle of people just pressed together <laughs> that I've met in real life. You heard of the 4am club? Oh, it's fucking broke. <laughs> <laughs> what gyms do you, do you work in the same gym together? Aye. 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 Work in the village. Working. So it's, it's in a hotel, mate, village hotel. Uh, ah, yeah. in Glasgow so I've got a wee leisure club in there so but it was, ah, it was fucking hilarious so did you kind of focus more on things like that then when you when you were kind of I know that I think that was back in February or March you'd done that so that was kind of pre-lockdown but did you I know you've posted quite a lot obviously since then was that a kind of focus to keep you doing something material wise ah, yeah, I've been I've put up a couple of videos since then um, uh, just to keep the juices flowing but I've kind of came up with a couple of characters I think I'm going to film one, one in a couple of weeks so keep your eyes peeled for that but I think I'm going to go into the character kind of stuff and just adjust to the times really I won't, I won't get a twitch man everybody's got a fucking twitch I don't even know what that is what is I don't know what how is it works it? We, in the past, we, 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 we went to kind of we went to like we sat down we're like what do a podcast like what can we do and I'd heard of Twitch, it's like live streaming. So people tip you, essentially. Oh, aye. So it sounds good now, doesn't it? You get me. Got top bell. So I, people watch you live, and if they enjoy what they see, they, they tip you, whatever it, whatever it is. And they follow Sorry. you. Yeah, you mostly, uh, mostly see that for like gamers and stuff, but I, didn't, like, I know there's more on it, but it's more for like gamers and like, well, for what I've seen anyway. Uh, but if somebody's looking to tip you, then fucking do right, I'll be on it. 
I've never really had a good experience with online stuff. I remember years ago when I was on Open Spot, I started this campaign as a piss take. It was serving my friendship. And the son done a story on it. Darren Connell was going to sell his friendship. It was I was just trolling, right? <clears throat> people started bidding. It went up to a couple of hundred quid, and people were like, "Oh, can we go to the cinema or that kind of shit?" It wasn't even that <laughs> funny. I don't even know why I done it. And then obviously, guys were like, "How much to pump them?" <laughs> huh? Pure sinister. How much for your ass, mate? <laughs> and I'm like, twenty-four year old open spot like that. <laughs> Knew I'd be like that at 60 quid, mate. <laughs> Back then, I was like, how dare you talk to me like that? Right now, I'd be like, mate, I'll come at your house. Mate, it's in your old shop. We'll just go in there. We'll need to know. Hi. Do you want me to stay tonight, man? Fuck's sake, I'll stay tomorrow, I know. You'd have to phone the fucking police with me. Never mind, throw away a bit. All right. <laughs> But I think, I think back um, when, when did you have 24 <laughs> like, the internet's pure I think it's changed see every 3 or 4 oh, years the internet's just oh, something man. totally different man have you watched any of the the, the great hack or the social dilemma and I've tried my hardest to stay away for the social dilemma because I know that I'm a, I'll, de- I'll delete all my social media if I watch it so I've, I've cut down on my social media anyway I don't watch my news feed or anything like that plus I've got nothing to hide anyway I just fucking post shit so have you watched it uh, I have I've watched <laughs> the first half of it and uh, it's just pure creepy man uh, you, Kenny's already not easy social media and he's only watched uh, half of it it's creepy it's really creepy Ah, <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's naked is it Ah, but see, see, I see what you said is, there. Uh, see what you said, Darren. Like you've nothing to hide. We spoke about this. It was one of the earlier podcasts. We we kind of touched on like the government listening to you and blah blah blah. And my kind of take on it was, well, if the government want to listen to me talking shit and slabbering when I'm eating my dinner, like I'm nothing to. It's not as if I'm plotting a big fucking, you know what I mean? Disaster. Or, I don't really care. Pure wink, you your words there, but didn't you? I did, I. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, no me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no me phone. But, uh, I well, like that the new button, eh? But it's all these, I don't want to pure go into it too deep, but if anybody starts talking shit to me about flat earth and <laughs> uh, COVID and 5G towers, normally they all smoke <laughs> cash. Do you know what I mean? There's a, tender, there's a uh, common theme. A reoccurring <laughs> theme, I. <laughs> Mate, that's how I've got my hair. I fucking licked one of them. <laughs> I look like I've half licked one. <laughs> no, no, <I'm> sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, so you, like, back to you. Talk, talk to me about you rather than five G tills. So you, then you're like, <laughs> What was it like getting in front of 700 people then? You shine yourself, were you, were you buzzing, were you steaming, were you... <laughs> um, no, I was buzzing. I think I got to that night and I was like... For, for very early on when I started gigging regularly, I did think I'm not going to let nerves get in the way now because it's too enjoyable. These things are supposed to be enjoyed. Life is too short. You're allowed to be nervous, but don't let it ruin the gig so I used to get nervous maybe a week before the gig and now I get nervous maybe five minutes before I get called on to stage but it's a good nerves it makes That's you throw it aye it makes you do better but I was obviously shouting it that night because it was the biggest gig in my life aye. but um, it was a great gig and I, I think an Australian won it so there we go Scottish Comedian of the Year and a fucking Australian won it Aye. No, that I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> great, great granny was Scottish or something, innit? Aye. Aye. allowed to enter it. The old two, what was, what was the old two like? Was, was it the one, no, the one in Circuit Hall Street, was it the one down at the boat marine? Island South Side. That, that one, I was brilliant. I mean, it was Aye. weird being on stage and thinking, I've seen Alabama Free here. Aye. And now I'm up here talking about Eggies. Aye. I mean, what a segue it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> See, I've, I've only, I've like, only, I love that venue, man. It's like I was just about to say, I've only ever been, well, I went to see uh, Coderline in there years ago. And uh, it is quite, because it's quite intimate. In fact, I've been twice. Did you ever watch The Staircase on Netflix? Aye, that I was actually, good. So, The Staircase, um, see the, lawyer, the American lawyer, David Rudolph, I think his name was? He, he done a, a UK tour. 
to talk about ah, staircase. Yeah. So my mum was a big fan, so uh, me and my missus and my mum, I took my mum, and we went to see this guy kind of explain the staircase and all that kind of stuff. And, but I could imagine, because it is quite intense and it? it's quite enclosed, Aye. quite a good atmosphere. Did they have a support band? <laughs> <laughs> Aye, Donald <laughs> Finley. Aye. Uh, so I remember seeing that. that how many minutes did you do? You know, I think it was only 10 minutes. It, it was about 15 comedians were all doing 10 minutes each. And, uh, aye, it went all right. Uh-huh. It, it did go all right. I remember feeling like I should have got something that night, but it is what it is, man. It was... I remember struggling to get gigs and then I got the final and then for the next year I got 150 gigs without Foxy. chasing it. Uh, so um, they're, they're beneficial and they serve a purpose and see if you're starting off and you're an open spot, I would say get into every competition that you can join for stage uh, time and experience. Uh, see, you spoke about having 10 minutes of material. What, do, do you have a kind of... Well, how long roughly do you think it would take you to come up with that? Does it does it just depend on things that come to your mind, or come to your head at that time? I think everybody's different. We've all got we're different ways of kind of coming up with stuff. Uh, I'm certainly different now to Could what be, I was yeah. back uh, in the day. But, I mean, I try to set myself a goal of doing one hour of new material every year. And I come up with a new hour during the Glasgow Comedy Festival. And then if I want to take it to Edinburgh or go on a tour, I'll do it that way. But I'll do all the open mics during the week to come up with my new material. And then I'll work it into a set for the weekend for when I'm getting paid. But because I've been doing it for so long now, I'll just kind of write it down in bullet points. So like say, like if I had a, my set list, I would put Guinness, Skinhead, 5G tower and then go up on stage and think I'm going to wing it here about that record right. it obviously mm-hmm. and then whatever gets a laugh then if I think that gets a laugh I'll keep that and work on it but I'm quite lucky because Scott Squad's improv as well so I think it's a muscle oh, is it? Aye, aye aye I thought I'd seen you post something that just got the scripts for Scott Squad is it but improv to a degree or is it just all improv? It's highly improv, but it's like, it's really, I mean, I, I can't talk for the other actors, but for me, they'll give you, I, I wouldn't even say it's a script, they give you sides, mm-hmm. w- which is your notes, and it'll just be like, Bobby goes into the station with a kettle, and <laughs> that'll be it, or Bobby goes into the station with a bag of totty scones, <laughs> and then I just improv off that basis. It will be Joe Hewlett and Chris Grady and stuff that will write those those bullet points. Uh, but I come uh, up with I come up with mine stuff as well. Wow, man! But I mean, like we're, we're such a wee family. Like I'll, I'll, I I mean, I, I I I'd like to think that I've not got an ego. So I'd be on set. I'd say if this is shite, tell me it's shite. And if you want to give me a line, feed me anything at all. Give me a line. So. The camera guys could be chucking me some stuff. Joe Hill will pop his head in. The director will say, why don't you say it this way? And we'll probably do it two or three times. But aye, the majority is uh, improv. But I'm there, you're filming for like three days solid, nine in the morning to seven at night. I don't think anybody's that funny to improv that long. So I'm glad that they're there helping me as well. Aye. What must be a lot of pressure filming that length of time? You haven't think it all yourself. That's oh, it's fucking. That's so cool, man. To to know it's, it's improv. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously, when you're just watching that, like having the uh, understanding of how these things work, so to hear that you come up with some of that sh- <laughs> shit is fucking brilliant. Oh, yeah, Gav. So, oh, yeah, so oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see, because people are like, I remember I went in for like my audition. I was so like surreal. They, f- they thought we can't make him a police officer because he's so stupid mm-hmm. so then they came up with Joe Hillett said we're going to get we'll make you a part and we would like you to be a nuisance who comes into a police station and annoys a police officer and then 
Poyas together kind of came up with the character of Bobby. But because I was working in Asda at the time, they were just like, what do you want them to work as? And I was like, trolley boy. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like fucking most of the things about my life. Bobby was, uh, I got Bobby because there was a comedian called uh, Gus Limburn that used to call me Bobby Davro, and I just thought it was funny Davro. as fuck. Mm. So I just, I done that Bobby, and then Muir was after a comedian called Jim Muir, who plays a comedian called uh, the Reverend Obadiah Steppenwolf. <laughs> so, Is that where you get a wolf t shirt? <laughs> no, I got. No. I, I thought I'd, I'd use Muir as a wee tip of the hat towards him because right. I love him. Right. But all the wolf stuff, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> Which be... day there? I know. <laughs> Take credit. Which so see, see, just going back to your audition. What, what did you audition for? Did you uh, for a police officer? No, they came. At, they they give you two options. They say you can either be a police officer or a bam and. I came up with a band, so right. they, they give you two additions, you go in and one was in front of Joe and the director Noddy, and then if you get past that, you do a massive group audition, and it's like on the spot improv games. So I think uh, my first edition, I was just talking about how I was a guy smuggling cocaine through an airport with Johnny's up Mars, but... Normally people would drink <laughs> olive oil with a Johnny fella coke. I would just stick the Johnny up my ass. And <laughs> uh, Joe was like, that's really funny, but you need to stop talking about your arsehole. And I was like, hey, fair uh, enough. That, that, that's a few times your arsehole's come up right, isn't it? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Bro, that's quite a lot. I don't know, man. I guess like a tick. I'm like, yeah, my fart in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sell you, I'll sell you. <laughs> I fucking have brought it up more than once or not. I'm just got a flashback here, sorry. <laughs> oh no, listen, chat away if it's one of your favourite things. <laughs> Say one of your favourite fetishes, eh? Aye. Aye. Uh, see if you can think back to one uh, sketch as Bobby. What one, have you got one that kind of sticks out that to be your favourite? I would say one of my favourites is probably the fat smurf the, when I had the blue <laughs> face paint on. Just the silliness of it. I think the Spider-Man was quite funny and all. I just love the kind of playing it so straight for something aye, that's aye. so silly. Aye. And uh, I loved when I fell. I fell on a, the it. grunt. Oh, it's... <laughs> so... But it's been, it's been really good. It's been life changing for me. I can't believe we just filmed. I think that was the six. We finished it there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah, the nice. six yeah. season. So brilliant man! That is a fucking brilliant show. It's really really good. Oh, uh, thank you. Doesn't he get enough recognition? Does it really? It doesn't, man. It, it, like it really really doesn't. See some of even like yourself, Jordan Young as well. That like, my two favourite characters are yourself and. Uh, Jordan, in fact, I oh, fuck up too many. I can't. I fucked it now. Uh, but are you, you, Jordan Your Young, boy, there, Gav. Uh, I know. You, <laughs> moment, Jordan Young and Grado. But they three characters are just fucking oh, hilarious. Thank man. you. Hilarious. Thank but you. But the one, the one you came in as a, we watched it the other day, Kenny. And what member? The, you came in as a, yeah, dressed, dressed as a police officer for a car boot sale. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, but I have noticed that. I mean, some people. Yeah, some people either love it or they don't know what it is. I, it. Uh, I, I don't mind. I've got no problem with that at all. Um, the feedback I've had has been nice. Um, how did, it's so weird. How, how does Karen keep a straight face all the time? Oh, she's like that in real life, mate. She's a dear face bastard. <laughs> <laughs> she's not even sounding funny. She just keeps turning up thinking that she thinks she's a real police officer. I <laughs> <don't know. laughs> <laughs> no, Karen plays it straight as well. Uh, her name's Karen in real life. Ah, well, no, so I wrote yeah. that there before I asked you. I was <laughs> <laughs> no, but Gav I, was shitting himself there. <laughs> I, I, I think the both of you just man. think play it straight, like just play it as straight as possible without being Aye. well, without trying to be too silly, and it just it works. But we always laugh. That's the beauty of filming. When we laugh and make mistakes, you just go again. But. Uh, Aye, she's a she's a model professional. She's been she's a call she's a real actress. She's been a to drama school and all that oh, kind right. of stuff. You've been really nice now. Aye, I'm like delete that <laughs> bit when I told her a prick. <laughs> <laughs> I'd imagine the some of the banner you must get on set though must be fucking out of this world because there's some funny people on that. Well, see, that's the thing in it. They say some people, like, like Jim Carrey, apparently, isn't really that funny in real life. 
Didn't they? They say uh, that some maybe. comedians aren't that funny, but you're going to say everybody's brilliant, aren't you? Well, I only film yeah. with Karen. I don't film with anybody oh, else. Oh, you know, you know. Yeah. Oh, right, right. So, say it's a six-week shoot. I would get three days. Jordan will get three days. Cradle will get three days. So, see that three days. It's only me and Karen for nine in the morning to seven at night. So, I don't see anybody else unless it's for the press release or something or oh. press work. But it is a great laugh because... You've got Noddy, who's the, the, the director, he's directed Still Game and Lemmy uh, Show and me. like all, the cameraman, Craig, like all these guys have got um, funny bones. The second uh, first director, um, Anne-Marie, uh, they're, they're all naturally funny. It's just a wee family that they've all been together for years. So yeah. I get a great laugh on set, but sometimes like... I hit the giggles a couple of weeks ago and all, and you're like, you need to be professional as well. But I, I remember uh-huh. hitting the giggles and I was like, fuck, man. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I'm going to... Can you get rid of them? Oh, because normally I'm alright at keeping a straight face, but as soon as I hit the giggles, I was like, I felt like I was going to have a panic attack or something because there's just like 20 people standing looking at you, waiting for you to stop <laughs> laughing. Aye. It's just aye. weird. Because it must be... Like, Kenny, Kenny and I, as I said, just just we started the episode, Darren. That we we filmed a um, basically your sponsor done. I wanted to do an interview with us to, for everybody to get to know us because we're always interviewing other people, kind of thing. So um, we sat down and he's like, right, you know, talk about the podcast and all like that. <laughs> just two, just couldn't stop laughing for fucking Aye. ten minutes. Just couldn't. I just couldn't do it. So that's the only thing I can. That was funny. It was aye. nothing funny at all. And that was in front. Hilarious. That was in front of one person in a camera. You know what I mean? Aye. So it must. How many? How many times you think it must take you? To, is there a few times it takes you a good fucking ten times to get something, or even more? Well, um, especially that time because I never done anything for five months. I was in lockdown on furlough, no gigs. I was very, very rusty. Next thing I know, I'm in a film set. We had no chance to do any improv games, no warm-up stuff. It was literally on-set action. Cool. And I'm like, oof. Uh, so, but... You're just trying to get it recorded just in case what's happened now happened again. <laughs> uh, plus the, co- the continuity is a wee bit fucked because I lost three stone during lockdown so oh sorry uh, I was thinking that imagine, imagine you went back pure ripped how was lockdown for you I just ate weeks <laughs> officer Cam <laughs> uh, steroids officer Karen <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, that's that's, uh, so when, when can we when can we expect a new season do you know Honestly, I don't know, man. No. I don't, everything's up in the air right now. Um, I, I, wouldn't like I, don't know. I need something like that, I don't know. Something pure oh, fun, I, man. Cheer everybody up a bit. Ho- hopefully it's going to be soon. I don't think there's much coming out content-wise, so I don't think it would be that long. But uh, I'm just really grateful. I've tried to change my mentality towards my life and think before I was like really probably ungrateful but then this time I'm thinking how many Canadians can say that they filmed a TV show during a global pandemic no many people mm. can say that so that's made aye, me very aye. that's made me feel a lot of gratitude no definitely definitely but do, you think, good word, uh, do you think uh, do you think sometimes it doesn't get recognition because uh, it's BBC eh? so what do you think people are kind of stepping away from watching conventional telly BBC, ITV, and they're maybe going towards like streaming and stuff like that. Do you think that's maybe why maybe a lot of people don't know about it or some <laughs> people don't know about it? It's a very popular Well, I, 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 I you're a dick. Well, <laughs> 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 Give me the fear. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's like, I mean, it was, uh, it started off as a Monday night at half ten. I know everybody's in their bed at half ten on a Monday night. Do you know what I mean? It's the start of the week. It is what it is, but I'm sure at one point we we were just like I mean obviously nobody's going to ever beat still game but after still game I think we were it's still game and then us uh, 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 for for viewing figures so everybody's got Netflix and Amazon and stuff but I don't know it's so weird it's like because I've not it's a strange question right? this is what you're talking about there have you ever watched Community the American show you know, 
I've actually got the DVD up there on the shelf. I've not uh, watched it yet, though, because uh, who's the main guy in it? The old guy is it Chevy Chase? He's in it. He's a, he's in it. He is in it. He's not the main guy. There's, there's a few. But they're all kind of like so that six or seven people. Uh, is that is that the one with King King Jung? Uh huh. Aye, aye. aye, King Jung's in it. Uh, the Donald Glover. You know Donald Glover. Aye, aye. Um, uh, this is America. The singer guy. Aye, Childish Gambino. Yeah. Aye. So they're on that. They've done that years and years and years ago, and they always say they would do six seasons in a movie. And they've done six seasons in during lockdown. It went on Netflix, but it was on Netflix like six years ago when it's came back, and the popularity it's had for it, it's just went through the roof. And now they're in talks of doing a movie. Well, we're I just think just because everybody's in the house. See, any high players there? So high player in it. That's a, that's a lot of chat, aye. Hey, Gav, man, you're just... You're just, you're just a question, mate. Darren Doon, man, that's shite. Fuck off. Just <laughs> you leave. Me and Darren will take it for you, mate. <laughs> no, I, look, I'm not complaining. It's like, it's weird because I don't... I don't want to say this, right, but the famous side, I don't really care about that. You just I want to be funny. Like, I just wanted to be funny and make people laugh. I never thought that I would get paid for it. I never yeah. thought that I would get a TV show. This is all the things that have came and you don't, you're not really prepared for it. So if I can pay my bills and earn a living, make people laugh, you know, people Maybe. people that do get in touch with me, it's so nice feedback and it's gave me a chance to go to things like Panto. Panto was something that I never ever thought would have done in my life, considering what I do. Because my stand-up comedy material was like really dark, <laughs> uh, very, very, very dark sense of humour. It's like my Twitter kind of stuff. Uh-huh. And then Bobby <laughs> comes, like, because Bobby's like non-offensive, child-like, lovable uh-huh. character that kids love, old people uh-huh. love, even though he's a dafty. And then they come and see, all these old people come and see, watch me do stand up, and I'm talking about hanging myself and taking speed. I'm like, all right. They're like, that's not Bobby. <laughs> what the fuck's happened to Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 Bobby's had a rough time yet, man. Somebody have a word with him. <laughs> age. But I, so it's like, I can, it's so weird because, like, my, my stand up comedy is 18 plus, Bobby's child friendly and then I've got pan oh it's such a weird way of a do you feel that do you feel that some people kind of when they meet you when they meet you and stuff like that do you kind of find that they expect Bobby almost because it's probably <laughs> where's it with you tonight fuck's it I know man Scott squad shite I'm like Bobby in real life like <laughs> 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 no well see the pair of glasses that Bobby wears I actually wore them when I was 15 and I kept them in a drawer wow. in my in my room because I, I was going to I intended to use them as a prop because they were massive on my face when I was 15 <laughs> but then when I got <laughs> 20 stone they were fucking tiny uh, so <laughs> is, that but, the ones that, is that the ones that you wear in your Twitter your photo you use it as a user wee boy no man no. they were my uh, I couldn't keep them NHS belters <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, when I worked in Gla- uh, Asda, I had glasses. So, see, as soon as I'm wearing glasses out in the street, I get recognised uh-huh. all the time. But see, as soon as I'm not wearing glasses, I never ever get recognised without glasses. As soon as I've got the specs on, though, it happens quite a lot. Because I've got bad a- 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 contacts, I- I've got really uh-huh. bad eyesight, so I can only right. wear black, thick framed glasses. I can't wear other any type of specs. Aye. Oh, right, anyway, let's talk about ayahuasca. Aye, aye. Aye, so, well, I've seen that obviously you, you've been quite, you've been quite open about like certain struggles and stuff you've had, which is, which is great because it's kind of highlights it to a lot of people who are probably scared to see it, do you know what I mean? So seeing somebody like yourself say that, it's a big, big kind of uplift for people, do you know what I mean? So I've seen obviously you travel to fucking Peruvian rainforest yeah. to go and take ayahuasca. It was a 32 hour round trip. 32 hours mate um, it was obviously that was like I had to wait in Amsterdam airport for 7 hours and stuff but 32 hours there and back it was it was insane uh, but I'm glad that I did it I don't regret it I think I just hit a, a brick wall in my life when I was thinking I was on like antidepressants and stuff and I don't want to be controversial but they were not working for me aye, aye. and I just thought 
I feel like I'm poisoning, poisoning my mind, my body, and my soul with my diet, alcohol, drugs, and antidepressants. And that's when I boned up to 20 stone. And I just thought, because I used to always be like the fat, funny, drunk guy. And then it just wasn't funny anymore. And I could feel it. Like I could feel my health going downhill. I was like, I'm 28 years old. I was getting chest pains a lot, lots of panic attacks. And I thought something really, I think I I need to go drastically Mm -hmm. and do something here. So I went over to Peru. I think it was two weeks. It made me realize so much like, because I had to go, it made me realize that I have a problem with food, like 100%, see like junk food and sugar and stuff, because you have to go on a detox. Uh, you had to go on a, a week detox before I go there. That's so I, I couldn't stop, I couldn't stop eating junk food. I, I remember, it's probably funny now, but see the, the night before I went, I was eating kebabs and drinking iron brew and stuff. I just couldn't <laughs> stop doing it. And then see when I got to Peru and I was coming off all that shit, it felt like I was coming off a drug. It was, it was horrible. It was embarrassing as well, but like I can't believe I've got to that stage where I'm so reliant on uh, like self-medicating, yeah. really, with uh-huh. fucking junk food. What was it like? So we quite enjoyed anyway. Joe Rogan, eh? Yeah, aye, we really like Joe Rogan. He, he's had a lot of people on talking about it and yeah, going to the retreat. Even, even that... Uh, James English, you done it? Aye. No, I was thinking about Miley Cyrus, mate. That's what I was thinking about. Oh, did she? Hannah right. Montana, man. She's went and done ayahuasca. <laughs> Hi, it's, uh, Hi. It was pretty terrifying. Um, I wouldn't recommend taking ayahuasca. It was just to the because po- everything I do is for comedy and to get material as well. And see, right. when you're there and you're taking it, I did think, oh, I'm going to die here because. At certain points, I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. I think I went five and a half days with food as well. Fuck. Just couldn't eat. My ankles were swelling up and stuff. So I went through a proper detox and I had to drink this six times. So it was fucking terrifying, man. So I think it broke us. And then by the time I came back, it, it planted a seed to improve my life. Aye. But... You think you think your life is tough. I thought I was depressed, and then you go there and you do something like that, mm-hmm. and it just shows you how good life is. What was your first sort of experience in Peru? I, I, again, the article was talking about you were going up the fucking Amazon River and a wee boat and all that. Like, that must have been quite surreal as well. It was mental because if you've ever watched Apocalypse Now, no, it's a really amazing war film for back in the seventies, and uh, I was obsessed with it for some reason. I used to watch it all the time before I went to Peru, so my heat was fucked, and <laughs> I was going up this boat up the Amazon rainforest, thinking I was in apocalypse now. <laughs> uh, but it was it was mental. Like I got to the jungle, there was a a family there that worked with the shaman and they've all they always work with them and they've always been in the jungle and when i got off the boat they looked at me like i was an alien and it turns out that they've never seen a fat person before i mean they might have seen a fat person but they've not seen a 20 stone person so there was a wow. there was a guy there that was looking at me like i was an actual alien and i ended up becoming quite friendly with him and it was so weird because he never spoke english and i, I never spoke his language right. but see <laughs> honestly see within 10 days we could communicate to each other and it was just like you don't even think about language or skin colour or or anything like that mm-hmm. but it was just I mean I never brushed my they give you leaves to brush your teeth you're not allowed to drink cold water no showers you had to get a wash in the river but I was too fat to go into the river so I just done that fuck that I'm not going to wash <laughs> <laughs> so I, I never had a wash in about two weeks <laughs> fuck why you sitting, sitting next to you in the clean the way here man fuck that I oh, know man it's mental no, you, you get one in the sink before you go in the clean <laughs> <don't you? laughs> so what, what was the actual experience like though so uh, obviously you said you drink it six times but it's, it's one of the well it's one of the most fucking uh, what do you call it intense Psych- most strongest psychedelic, psychedelic drugs in the world isn't it yeah well I put it this way like see anything that you've read about or looked up on it 
if you've mm-hmm. heard any interviews about anybody talking about it, I would say it's probably true. Yeah. You drink it and it is the most rancid thing that you'll ever take in your life. It is like drinking oil. Yeah. Um, it tastes like shite. It tastes like oil. Mm. It tastes like dirt. It is so rancid, and I say this without exaggerating, mm-hmm. you actually dread drinking it again. Like, you've got one day on, one day off. See that? See the day off that you mm-hmm. need to rest? Aye. It's spent thinking, I can't believe I need to drink that. I, I cannot <laughs> believe. And then you're like that to everybody, I'm not drinking that. See if they offer me that, fuck that, I'm not drinking that. Because it is the most disgusting thing. I've never experienced anything like that. It makes you instantly drink and then you just do that. Like, no, it just makes your body... I, it, and that's what it's designed to do. It makes you punch. You get a wee punch bucket, a wee tiny bowl, and you just punch into this bucket. Supposedly men- mentally, spiritually, and physically. And when I drank it, I was just purging into a bucket, a bucket for four hours. Um, madness, absolute madness. But you get visions, you get out of body experiences. Uh, it's like some shit that you see. You're like, I don't really want to tell anybody that because they think I'm off my nut. Or uh, like it was just it like a movie. Was it like being in a movie? Like because it was that just strange and surreal. I uh, yep, strange and surreal, and I could feel like when I was being sick into a bucket, I could feel like anxiety and depression and stress. I could feel that actually leave me and go into yeah. this bucket, and I'm like, I can't believe that. And see, since then, I've never really experienced suffering like that. Depression. I've had a bad day, maybe stressed. Yeah. But I think since that happened to me, I've been pretty laid back. Uh, I've took my life really easy. Uh, before, I used to have a bit of a temper and stuff. And But the visions I was getting was like, I remember having a vision of like, maybe me being cheeky. See, I was being cheeky to my mom and my dad and then leaving their house. So the vision I would see, would it would show me that from their point of view. Oof. It was pretty, pretty much yeah, a head fuck. It was really, really intense, man. I wouldn't recommend it for the faint-hearted. I certainly wouldn't recommend it for a laugh. Or, yeah, you know, right. people would no, think, no. "Oh, I'd go out to see what it's like." It is proper I like insane. Means, eh? is, it, is it? Is it true? Like, obviously, everybody meets Mother Ayahuasca, and so this same sort of person, and everybody who's took it has that same sort of experience with with her. Is that? I I would say I had I had that experience. I can't remember. Maybe it was my fourth time. I was being sick into the bucket, and I was I think I was dehydrated, so there was nothing coming up, mm-hmm. and it was really uncomfortable. I think that was probably when I was like five days near food, and I was just exhausted, and I had this feeling that somebody walked up to me. A bunch of women walked up to me, and she placed her palm on my back and every time she push, pushed up I was sick and then after that I was like that to, there was an English speaking guy there mm-hmm. and I was like who was that that came up to help me be sick there and he was like nobody was beside you and I was like there was a group of women running about me um, helping me be sick into this bucket and they were like there was nobody around you and I had this feeling that it was like a female like being that helped <laughs> me through it. It's so weird saying that out loud because it's sounding like, like a psychopath. But. No, <laughs> I, mean, no, no. I, I, I know a person that, uh, that I met for Australia, he'd done it and he he says, like, people say this, because there's ayahuasca and there's something that's apparently similar to ayahuasca, but it's, but it's no. And it's a DMT? DMT. Aye. So that's really, really, no, you shouldn't be doing that. Because if you want the you should be doing it through with the kind of way you've done it if people are needing it. Hi. I mean, uh, guess what I've got today, boys? It's, it's no like that. It's a, it's a proper process. Uh, hi. It. Why was it six times? Why six uh, times? See, in all honesty, I, d- I don't know. Uh, and I remember being there and there was a few, there was like people there, there was a woman there from Portugal and she was saying, this will pro- this is too intense for you. Like, you shouldn't be here. It's, 
too it will be too strong. You should have went somewhere that's you know as intense because you can go and take it in places that you don't need to detox. You can go to like mm -hmm. a hotel and get a shower and. I went like in the deep end, but then I'm like that uh, straight away. I'm yeah. thinking I'm never going to do it again. I might as well go on about yeah, it. But, for experience. but it was mental. See, lying in the jungle as well. See the, the noise of the jungle. My pal was there. He never had earplugs. Do you know, within four days, I would say he nearly had a mental breakdown because he couldn't sleep. See the noise, uh, just insects and monkeys and all that shit at night. Like, I would take no, my earplug out. <laughs> but, but he, he never bought them. He never had them. You don't get my so, shit. <laughs> I'm we're, we're, you're there, man. We're, we're in the middle of the Amazon jungle, mate. There's no shows. There's a fucking sparrow in the corner. Where did your ears fade? Just roll up leaves and just put them in the <laughs> we, we go shopping before it and the guy tells you, look, bring oh, a get, torch, uh -huh. bring earplugs. And for some reason, he never... Bought, bought himself earplugs but you do that with your earplug and it's just like <laughs> put that back in we had armed guards as well we had, I had an armed guard protecting me 24 hours a day a guy walking about with a shotgun because he was just like you're white and European we could sell you and I'm like mm. oh all right. mm, fuck. Many pennies, man. Many, many pennies. For you. Aye, he's like looking at me because I'm fat. Like, oh, you'd be a lot of money. <laughs> is it your fat money, mate? Is that what you are? <laughs> <laughs> the, weird, the weird thing about ayahuasca is it's fucking it, it's tree bark, isn't it? Like it's tree bark. Two different types of tree bark, and it's DMT, and they brew it in a pot, and the shaman blesses it, and he does all that kind of stuff. But, um, I think that's how I think that's how it's made uh, it's so weird as well because see before I did it I was obsessed with it and it was my life and I knew everything about it and then see as soon as I've done it she was like a lifetime ago even though uh, it was only it's, maybe three years ago uh, it's all packed away and it's done so you don't need to really aye. Uh, aye. aye but I'd say I mean part of the you need to stop taking antidepressants one of the like because you can't take ayahuasca and take antidepressants yeah. so I stopped taking antidepressants and I've not took them since so uh, well, brilliant, man. Been, brilliant. probably been the best thing for me I uh, want to be said for antidepressants in there but that's just that's way above story, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think yeah. not to be controversial they serve a purpose but that's what they do they, serve, they plug the crack in the dam before it snaps, uh -huh. like breaks. That's but a great way. Of, aye, that's a perfect good way. analogy. Aye. 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 So what's uh, I know. I know we touched on at the start of the podcast. We talked about your, your favourite comedians and stuff like that. Who would you say if you had to pick like one favourite comedian or double act or whatever? Would it? Who do you think it would be? I love how we're moving on for, I wanted to hang myself and eat speed so I Peter K man I fucking love it <laughs> <laughs> we bring it back up again didn't we we can't just go <laughs> any other really really bad thoughts down <laughs> you. you can if you want me feel free it's <laughs> she's about to lay in my community DVD it's not the the <laughs> <laughs> no I'd say uh, I mean the greatest for me the greatest comedian of all time probably for me has to be Richard Pryor Richard even Pryor. though I grew up watching a lot of Eddie Murphy but then when I watched Richard Pryor later on in life uh, they were very similar. So obviously mm -hmm. I knew that Eddie Murphy was inspired by Richard Pryor, but they need to be up there. Obviously Vic and Bob, but you know, it was it, all the Scottish comedians always say Billy Conley. Uh, Billy Conley was not really my favourite comedian, even though I do love him. But uh, I grew up with a lot of American humour. Like when I was younger, it was yeah. planes, trains, and automobiles. John Candy, <laughs> Steve Martin. Yeah. Um, what about Bob? Like Bill Murray, Ghostbusters. That was that was my humour. Ghostbusters was brilliant, man. Oh, you know, oh, first, I first time I ever seen Richard Pryor was a. Uh, I watched. I think it was me, myself, and Irene. Jim Carrey and he's watching Richard Pryor with his three wins, the three big black boys and uh, I was like I wonder who that is they're watching and then I watched one of his sets and I was, he is fucking hilarious man Aye. he is really really good that's an amazing film by the way one that's of the amazing. best films out uh, but modern day I don't really I don't know like 
Have you heard the... Uh, time to watch? Do you get time to watch other comedians or are you just you're busy doing anything? And... I, during lockdown, I've not been watching stand-up, but I've been yeah. watching a lot of TV shows and films. But when I was doing my own stuff, I would always stay and watch other comedian sets and all that kind of stuff. But I've been in Scotland so long, I was trying to maybe go down to Lon- London and stuff and yeah. obviously wanting to branch out, but mm-hmm. everything like that has been put on hold right now. But I will always love stand-up comedy. I love comedy. Right, so, uh, I mean, Kevin Bridges is fucking unbelievable. He's nah. he's got funny bones. Frankie Boyle, Frankie he's Boyle. got funky bones. Right. Like, when I was first starting off and Frankie Boyle was there, there's, see, you know who else? I've, I've totally had a mind fart here. Uh, Ga- see Gary Tank Commander, the, who's oh, the guy aye, that, aye. who's, <laughs> is it Greg? I Greg McHugh. Greg McHugh. Hey, he used to be a stand-up comedian, right? And I used to go and watch him when I was 18 and he used to compare the Glasgow stand and see when he used to compare it in day sets, you could actually feel electricity in there. Like yeah. he was fucking unbelievable. Like Aye. unbelievable. And then he went to pursue acting, but mm-hmm. he was on any time I seen him, he was outstanding. Aye. And that was even before he did Gary tank commander and stuff. Aye. Do you ever watch it? Any... Just get other passions. No, I'm just going to say get other passions Aye. and you pursue that. You can always come back Aye. to comedy. So, Aye. but uh, do you ever watch any kind of foreign comics? Like, there's a guy, um, what was his name? Steve Hughes. He's Australian, but he does a lot in the UK. Have you ever listened to him? Yeah, I gigged with him actually when I was uh, years ago when I was just starting off. He did a gig. Oh God, where was it again? I think it was in the garage. It was me, him, and Reginald Hunter. Right. And uh, Stephen Hughes was brilliant. Um, aye, aye, he's aye. great. I think I've seen him at, at the live at the Apollo. He's been on that as well. Aye, he has, aye. aye. But he was funny. I, I hadn't seen him, and I seen him the first time last week. A boy in work showed me him. Uh, aye. Some of his stuff is fucking, like you say, it was quite close, close to the bone. That's what I like. I like, that's why I like somebody like, see, you're talking about yourself, your dark humour, and Frankie Boyle is fucking so close to the bone. He's past the bone, yeah. he's broke the bone. Yeah, uh, <laughs> math, Frankie Boyle, man. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, man. And see, see people who say that, oh, fucking, oh, that shit, I don't like that stuff. You're like, don't watch it then. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Aye, uh, they're, they're so against it, but yet they still watch it so that they can. They can Put it down, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. well, fucking just don't watch it. That's, That's it, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. 100%. So, the future for you then? So, obviously, you've said maybe branching out and maybe trying your arm and maybe somewhere like London or... Is that... Obviously, everything's on hold anyway, but eventually that's what you're kind of looking to do. Yeah, I'd love to start doing stand-up around the UK. Um, I'd love to be in a film, like to get an acting part in a movie I love horror like that's my first love even though I love comedy but (laughs) uh, horror films and sci-fi and stuff so I'd I'd love to be like did you watch Dez? my missus watched that was that with David Tennant? yeah Uh, so even though it's I mean it's pretty grim but to be an actor aye it's Mm -hmm. uh, Dennis Nielsen the serial killer Mm mhm so I'd love to do something like that, just totally different for Bobby, completely different. Uh, like, have you seen Mandy with Nicolas Cage? No. I feel like, so like you've asked us, we like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a weird film. It's like a really weird retro film, and Nicolas Cage is known as this, like, eccentric actor that's kind of just does any films. But Mandy is about a guy who's a logger and he lives in the woods with his wife and his wife gets kidnapped off of a cult and Nicholas, Nicholas Cage goes looking for his wife and it's honestly incredible. It's, but everything about it is amazing. The soundtrack, the, the visual, everything is so surreal and 
Nicholas Cage actually downplays it a wee bit, so he's not your typical mental Nicholas Cage in it. Uh-huh. And I'm like, that's that's my type uh-huh. of shit. That's the uh-huh. type of films that I love, just weird and odd. And but then I love the Scottish stuff, like Peter Mullen and Tyrannosaur and Dead Man's Shoes and This Is England and stuff. And I'm absolutely I crave to just be in something like that to just play a mad oddball bastard and I'm a serial fella a serial fella a serial fella a fella do you know see when you're saying that there do you know I just had this wee thought do you know how I'd fucking love to see you play the Joker yeah. oh no way I I'd fuck. love that mate see, see when you're saying there like just a pure you'd love to play a pure oddball psychopath like that is especially the most recent film but Joaquin Phoenix was fucking unbelievable in that yeah, I mean, I, see, I I know I've seen I've seen the others six times. I actually seen the Joker six times. Like, Aye. I just that was I, a different I said take on the Joker, but when it, it was a pure Aye. wow. I think I said something like it's not perfect, but it's the closest to perfect that I've ever seen for a film. Like. I never looked at it like it was a superhero film. It was just a guy descending into madness. Uh-huh. And Phoenix was just incredible. Like, I love him. He's probably one of my favourite actors. He inspired me to be vegan. He just... The film is a 10 out of 10, man. I'm so glad uh, that uh, they cleared uh, up at the Oscars. Have you heard the soundtrack as well? In the film? I'm assuming it would be in the movie. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, fucking it. amazing, man. Well, get it on Spotify when you're chilling out. I mean, knowing the film, it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> oh, right. I haven't got to that. <laughs> but I fucking Darren is a joker. You, man. How do you find? How do you find being vegan? If you, you're accustomed to it now, was it a bit of a process? Do you do CBD uh, as well, didn't you? I do CBD. I I put it in my morning coffee, just a couple of drops in my coffee in the morning, mm-hmm. and uh, I feel like it helps me. The guy mm-hmm. in the shop told me treat it like a vitamin, and that's what I treat it like. I just treat it like a vitamin. I don't look into it too much. I don't overthink it. People are like, oh, you're fucking going to fail a drug test. There's nothing <laughs> There's nothing illegal about it. There's, no, there's not at all, man. No. So it, I feel like it helps me. But being the vegan, like, I just... The all or nothing attitude always used to make me fail. And I've not applied that to being a vegan. I just try my best. I don't mm-hmm. eat meat, fish, cheese, dairy. But see, if I'm going to have a biscuit with my cup of tea and my mom gives me a biscuit, I'm just going to eat it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to You're not going to run next door and check their app on. Aye, like, aye, aye. But, oh, is that vegan? Because you know, aye, is that man? digestive goat fucking milk in it? <laughs> but I won't like. Obviously, I'm not going to take the piss. I'll be vegan as I possibly can. Uh-huh. I aye. think it's vegan for health reasons, and then everything else came about animals and stuff. But when I was twenty stone, I thought. I need to drastically lose weight and to get as fit as I possibly can. I looked at veganism as an elimination diet. I'm eliminating McDonald's, kebabs, yeah. crisps, all that nonsense. I'm getting as much veg into my body as possible. And then after maybe two weeks or something, I, f- I realised, because I'm a fat bastard, right? It doesn't matter how much weight I lose. I will always have the mind of a fat bastard. And after two weeks, I was like, this food actually tastes amazing. Yeah. And I was eating a lot of things for the first time, like sea salads with beautiful like dressings and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was just making me feel instantly amazing. I was getting like mild u- euphoria after I started mm-hmm. eating things like kimchi and sauerkraut and all that. And then through that I just started looking up see I've got I've not got a problem with people eating meat but I, I think about the quality of meat and stuff and see when I was working in Asda the actual quality of meat is just not that good and I think there's just too much there's too many people eating too much meat and it's just we're no Joe Rogan we are can fucking uh, hunt uh, elk do you know what I mean <laughs> Mm-hmm. See if I could hunt elk, I probably would, but I can't. So I'll just be <laughs> vegan. <laughs> you're you're not quite an extremist, eh? <clears throat> no extremist is in that you actually fucking bring the world to its knees. But if you go do something, you do it to the the, the extreme, like with ayahuasca, you're like just going to the fucking maddest and the best one. And when you're like, right, eliminate something, like I'm eliminating everything that's bad for me. I'm just starting fresh. 
I'm going to do that. I, and you know, years ago, I would say that was a disadvantage in my life. Nah. And now I try to use it in, for the positive. So, uh, but I'm definitely like that. I'm like, at the start of lockdown, I started an intermittent fasting and I fucking fasted for 120 days. <laughs> Stupid man in a row. <laughs> 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 but then see when I gee up I just say ah fuck it I can't even be asked anywhere but then but see for that 120 days I'm like you've ever heard of intermittent fasting <laughs> go out and lick a 5G tower fucking cold right and then right. don't eat for 16 hours and you'll be alright <laughs> that's the fast track version of Danny Bam no like yet <laughs> I'm a fit in club man <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a 30 minute sleep club mate uh, <laughs> I uh, uh, Darren, I watched, um, well, me and my missus watched Game Changers uh, on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And we, my missus always got kind of, like, stomach problems and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, the one thing she'd never eliminated was meat. So, well, right, lockdown happened. Why don't we, not even, we weren't really trying to be vegan, we are just trying to be, start with vegetarian, you know what I mean? Just try and eat a bit more, um, a bit less meat, sorry, and like you, we weren't, ugh, I wasn't really going extreme. If we, if we went out for dinner and I wanted a steak, I would have a steak. Do you know what I mean? But see the benefits of, because it was all today with the, the sort of bad bacteria in your gut and stuff like that, and this inflammation and blah, blah, blah. And see, within about two weeks, it's a fuck, it was a massive difference. So, like, uh, I think a lot of people, when they hear like vegan or vegetarian, oh, fuck that. Like, no, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not doing that. But see, when you actually have, see, when you think about the quality of food you're having, and the taste of it as well, like you're saying sometimes, you're like, fucking hell, this is amazing. Yeah. Uh, and you don't miss it, do you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, well, all I've done is eat meat for the last week, but... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I see that, Gav, man, anybody free under the bus? Dipping sausages in the Guinness, like that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but see, see when you don't look at it, like, see when you've no got an angle, like, I just want to be fit and healthy. Mm-hmm. If somebody told me I could be fit and healthy through eating meat, I would do that, but... For what I've learned is I'm fit and healthy through a vegan lifestyle. And you just work in a gym, so you'll know that I went to a, fa- a personal trainer once, and the first thing he told me was to stop drinking milk. And I was like, what? And he's like, I stopped drinking milk. He, he led me. I was like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> I was like, what about calcium? And he's like, there's nothing milk can do for you. And that totally blew my mind. He's uh-huh. like, you need milk when, obviously, you're a baby, you need milk. Uh-huh. But mm-hmm. I was just like... I never knew that. I thought milk was good for you. Just empty Stop calories. Sugar and milk. Yeah. I see. I never. I never knew any of that. So I don't. When people uh, argue with me online and stuff, and they're like, "Oh, you're a vegan," I, I wouldn't say I'm a mad vegan. Uh, no, not I, I'm. I'm open minded. I don't judge anybody. Um, I miss fucking kebabs every day of my life. I miss them like a lover misses stuff. See that way when somebody goes away to World War Two and they're running away in the train and the fucking bugs chasing a guy in the train. That's like me and a kebab. I miss that, is, I miss kebabs every day. Is it the kebab that's leaving or you that's leaving? It's me. It's me that's leaving. Because <laughs> <laughs> if, if I was chasing a kebab, I'd catch it. <laughs> it's fuck me, man. <laughs> no, but um, like never seen never, but. I'm, I'm just going to keep... It, mate, as long as you keep smoking. Uh, it's working, it's working clearly. I mean. But Game Changers are good. Gut health is amazing. I've, I've, I'm mad for the gut health. Yeah. I take all my vitamins and stuff. I mean, that's how I suppose Joe Rogan is good because if I, I wouldn't have went vegan if it wasn't for Joe Rogan because I heard uh, Rich Roll. Rich Roll went on his podcast as a guest and then I started listening to him. Mm-hmm. That's he's, amazing, but he's about information, does it? Again, recently, he spoke about the whole veganism thing again recently, and he even had the guy for the game changers on, eh? They had both and of them, they, yeah. Done it, ah, yeah. Through, they had the guy for the other side debunking it, and then they had the what's the name of that guy, the MMA guy, Gaff? I don't know, yeah, I know who it is. But it's like, I mean, no matter what, I think we're all going to be vegan one day anyway. I think meat will become such a, meat will be like caviar. Do you know what I mean? Right. There's just... Just so rare. Aye. Like... 5G towers fucking <laughs> <laughs> Aye. Oh man, but... Hey, we'll, uh, we had Nelson Tadgav. 
Because why let Darren get to his bed? See, he's got McDonald's coming in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ripping the head off. <laughs> <laughs> in between a cheeseburger. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> here, man, don't. I'm getting a chubby. <laughs> I'll do that for my OnlyFans account. I'll pump a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> do I plug your OnlyFans account? Well, what here or? Aye, at veganfarter dot com. No, no. Uh, to answer your question, Kenny, no. Uh, I think no. The no, no, last thing just we were talking about vegan and um, your Twitter name and stuff like that, or your name is you're known as the Vegan Gorilla. Aye. So, so obviously you changed the vegan gorilla to when you became vegan, but where, what's the gorilla part? Is that when you were kind of a bit heavy and stuff like that? No, it was I uh, Gav. He could have been a really strong person. <laughs> I, I actually seen, when I was researching about going vegan, I seen a meme and it was a picture of a gorilla and it just says, where do you get your vegan from, bro? And I thought, <laughs> that is funny as fuck. Because I never, yeah, I never realised gorillas just eat veg. Don't eat me. Right, right. Yeah. So that's how that happened. Right. Well, uh, Darren, we've got one more question for you, mate. We ask all our guests on the um, very last question. So if you could have one drink and one drink only, what would you have and who would it be with? Does it have to be alcohol? No, not at all. Nah, in you want, wait, anybody, past or present? Or... With anybody. I would say I would love to have a chocolate milkshake right. with Chris Farley. Chris Farley? Who's Chris Farley? He's a, <laughs> I can't even believe you two bastards just <laughs> said that. <laughs> Sorry. I was pure He's a, we pause this and quickly Google him and then we'll come back. Like, oh, Chris, Chris Farley, hi. He's a old American comedian that was in a film called Black Sheep and Tommy Boy. He used to be a right. cast member of Saturday Night Live. Oh, right. He was uh, supposed to be the original Shrek, but wow. he died. He died of a drug overdose, a, a drug overdose in a hotel room, and then Mike Myers took care of him. But he's probably one of the most funniest people I've ever watched in my life, and I'd have a chocolate milkshake with him. So. Nice right. man. A vegan chocolate, chocolate milkshake. Aye, <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> oh, well, he had a drink problem as well, just like me. So I'm like, fuck it, chocolate milkshakes. Chocolate, chocolate milkshakes for the boys. Man. <laughs> but when I when I was an alky, I'd say I'd probably have a pint of vodka with uh, Pete Dockett or something. I going to be a proper date mental man. What about you? <laughs> well. I've changed mine about fucking three times now, so mm. Kenny, Kenny's just... We should change it every time. We, we Aye, fuck it, we'll just go and see what I feel right. Go go for it. Yours is, yours is quite a nice one, man. Oh, I see my nice, my, my nice one that we recorded. Uh, my dad passed away when I was quite young, before I was 18, so I said I'd like to just sit and have a pint with him. That'd be pretty cool, man, because he never got the oh, opportunity. That's nice. So. That's just, that's nice. Then I come in with a pure stupid one and fuck it all up. Aye, so. once you sit down and have a curly wurly, uh, you make it out. With fucking Scooby Doo. Now I have a fucking apple juice with Scooby Doo and you're talking about your back. <laughs> you dick said no, a little pellet. <laughs> I said, I said uh, my answer was I wanted to have a Manhattan with uh, Barack Obama. Fucking love Barack Obama, man. I just thought he was cool. He is cool, but man. He is cool. I feel like I need to change it now because the mirror I say it, the mirror mm. shite it sounds. How can it sound? It, just, it sounds the same every time. Guys. I mean, to me, it it's always going to be shite if you're kidding. Oh, cheers, mate. No, it is good, man. It is good, guys. What would you ask Barack Obama? We'd be like, who, who was? Was the White House? First of all, I'd want to say, ah, but like, what do you think of Donald many Trump? Many rooms, many rooms. <laughs> <laughs> many rooms, you know, uh, <laughs> Would you think of Donald Trump? That's what I would want to ask him. Like, honestly, would you think of this guy? Because he's fucking nuts, isn't he? Let's be honest. So, Ah, he's brilliant, man. Good entertainment. But anyway, but... Darren, fucking Aye, absolute pleasure, Darren, mate. Thanks very much for coming on, mate. Aye, over the moon, mate. Absolute pleasure. No bother, boys. How long have we, we, we done that for there? Yeah, that was about an hour and a half. Aye, Aye, so great stuff. So long, man. Who did I invoice for this? For the toilet. <laughs> Ga- Gavin, yeah, anyway. Gavin, 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 Gavin's already pennies, man. <laughs> it's, eight, it's 800 quid each, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> £1,700, just to down, Gavin. <laughs> Kill me, I'll get that. Uh, but I mean, if, if you're ever up for it again, it'd be fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah.
So uh, when everything's coming back up and running, let us know about your stand up as well because I'd for one hundred percent be coming Aye, to see right. you. I didn't see it, man. Aye. Brilliant, 100%. boys. Look, see when you have this up as well. Feel free to tag me. I'll share it. If you want me to come back on, I'll come back on. No worries. But, but it was a good chat tonight, by the way. It was a good man. laugh. I enjoyed it. Thank man. you very That's much. Good, man. That's what we always worry, didn't we? We always worry that. We're just two fucking idiots, aren't we? Just, <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> I was thinking, imagine if it wasn't recording, man, I'd be fucking devastated right now. Oh, no. <laughs> Any, you record, man? Shut up, stop being You click your mouse like you're trying to get a finger through your laptop, man. <laughs> yeah, oh. uh-huh. Wait, you've seen my fucking laptop, man. It'll load it with coal for 30 minutes before we come on. So. <laughs> Uh, uh, bye. But anyway, great. I'll let you go on, mate. And, uh, thanks bye, again. Absolutely. No worries, boys. All the best, right. mate. Talk Speak to you soon, soon mate. Bye bye. Bye bye.